This time, we will determine the use case scenarios. A use case scenario is a single path through the use case. Okay, so basically we need to start with use case, then use case scenarios. Okay, if we will go back to step number four of Kenworthy, um, for each use case, one moment, for each use case, decide on the normal course of events, actually that's the scenarios, when that user is using the software. Okay, let's go back. So we have the use case number one here. We have student enlist classes to enroll. The following scenarios are identified. Um, it can be written, by the way, in a narrative like um, a narrative like this example. Um, I will read uh, the scenarios. Okay, during the pre-enlistment period. Um, the student checks the classes are offered in the semester. The student selects the various classes based on the student's required courses to take. Of course, the student is not allowed to enroll to other, um, to other courses if, for example, if the student is still in first year. So it is not possible that the student will enroll subjects in the fourth year. Okay, the student checks the schedule for conflict. Okay, the student can check if the um, if his um, subjects have a conflict schedule. After the student selects classes, the student submits the selection for enlistment. Okay, uh, these are the things normally the student can do. This can be written as well in a bulleted form. I believe that I only uh, I um, I use a narrative um, style on how to present the scenario. But again, you can use a bulleted form like the example on the next slide. This one. This is actually the same. We are using still the use case number one, but I use a um, bulleted um, list or a number list. Okay. For each use case, we determine the normal courses of events or scenarios when the actor is interacting with the system. Okay. Um, from my experience, our team lead or team manager will let us create a formal type of narrative use case. Like what you can see right now, this is the formal use case. Um, the narrative um, actually, the narrative contains the different information. So, from the use case, um, from the use case, to the actor, to the goal, um, to the precondition, just like what I said earlier, the bakatong elements, precondition. We have the trigger, and we also have the scenarios. Uh, these are the scenarios where I actually got from the previous there. Okay, like that. But if you can see here, the goal here, uh, of course, we know that the, um, the student here is the actor. The goal, the student must be able to enlist in classes for courses prescribed by the curriculum. Precondition, the student must be an active student without academic delinquencies. The student must be registered in the system with a valid student ID and a password. So that's the precondition. For the trigger, it's the student schedule for pre-enlistment and the student needs to enlist the classes that the student needs to enroll for the, sem uh, for the semester. I believe that's also what you did in your, um, in your enrollment process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, this is still the same. Uh, that's actually the scenarios. I believe I forgot the exceptions here. These are the exceptions. Um, number one, the student ID and password does not match. Okay, that's, uh, actually that should be in our exceptions. Number two, the student is not an active student for the semester. Of course, um, that should be included as well because then again, um, if the student is inactive, the student shouldn't be able to access the system, right? 
Number three, um, there are no classes offered for the student based on the prescribed curriculum. For example, if the student uh, enroll, uh, actually the student is um, nag LOA siya for uh, for four years. For example, lang ha, or uh, hindi mo na siya nag enroll. So basically, if he or she will come back and enroll again, um, the courses or the subjects um, on his or her old curriculum will not be available to the new curriculum offered by the course. Diba? There you go. Okay, so this time, I will show you an example of a use case diagram. Okay, here. Um, alternatively, a use case diagram can be created to visualize the use case. Essentially, if we model all use cases, we will be able to visualize all users' interactions um, to the software system and subsequent features and functions that they need. Take note that um, by representing the user requirements um, this way, um, it will be easier for the analyst to verify the completeness and correctness of user requirements and easier for the developers to understand the requirements. If you can see the diagram, so again, we're still using the use case one, ha? Huh? I know that I, uh, I listed, oh, I put three use cases earlier, but I will only show an example for use case number one. Again, for use case number one, student, um, student enlist classes to enroll. So if you can see here, this is our use case, of course. This is the pre-enlistment. We have the system boundary that's inside, actually, that's inside our rectangle. We also have the actor, of course, the student. We have the scenarios here. We have four scenarios. Um, view classes offered, select classes offered, um, select classes, um, sub um, submit enlisted classes, and view selected classes. Again, the scenarios are our functions or our features of our system. Okay, Most of you might be wondering on how we can integrate all the use cases that we will develop given that each of the use case diagram represents one use case only as shown on this presentation. If we will skip and proceed to the next, um, uh, to next slide, you can see that um, it's not only one actor is available. Uh, there, uh, there are three actors. We have the student, we have the advisor, we have the cashier, we have the system boundary, again, that's the rectangle. Okay, and these are our um, scenarios. So for a um, student, um, he or she can pre-enlist classes, pay tuition fees, enrolls enlisted classes. For advisor, um, he or she can evaluate classes to enroll, assess tuition and fees, um, mark as advice and for the cashier basically um, he or she will be the one who's in charge for the bank um, service okay okay by creating this type of use case diagram we are able to identify the functions that are necessarily or that are necessary for the enrollment system to work in effect um, we are able to visualize the user requirements in a top-level perspective. If we were able to do it in this way, we can present the diagram to end users for validation. Again, the use case is actually our way on how to model, uh, on how to interpret um, the data that we gathered from the users. Then we will model it or we will create a use case, something like this. So, of course, um, if you prefer to use a um, prototype, um, prototype um, process model, um, of course, you really need to go and let the user check for your use cases or your uh, use case for validation. 
Okay, take note on that. Also, present diagram to developers for appreciation of the user requirements towards the creation of a design for the enrollment system. So again, there should be a validation from the end user. Then after validating it, you need to present the diagram directly to the developers so that they will have a clear view on what design they will create for the system or for the enrollment system. Okay. Um, there are also a few constructs that I would like to add. Um, specifically, I would like to introduce some relationships between um, use cases. Um, this is what I said earlier, um, the extents and also the include. Um, the default binary relationship between actors and use cases is called association. Like I said earlier, this relationship de uh, depicts the contract of behavior executed by the actor towards the system. The two new relationships that I would like to add are extension, or the extend, and inclusion, or the include. In this example, we see that the view selected classes, this one, extends select classes. Am I right? This means that while these two use cases are independent of each other, the base class, which is the select classes, this is the base class, okay, can opt to use the, ex uh, the extending class, which is the um, view selected classes. But this is optional or supplementary in nature. And the select classes, um, which is our base, use case can very well function even without the extending class. So again, um, to be honest, the select class here can stand alone, right? On the other hand, the relationship can be a part of relationship. So where a use case is included in another use case, meaning that the base use case or the select classes use case cannot be completed without the other use case. In this example, the select classes base class or the base this one okay includes the view classes offered. If we know the course ID already, we will not need the view classes offered, but we, do not, uh, but we don't do that. So we need to view the classes that are offered. So again, there are two different ways. Uh, we have two relationships. We have the extension and we also have the include. Hopefully you understand the relationship of the both.